when you do material characterization, you stumble upon different kinds of samples and with different shapes and types and forms. And to be able to to characterize them with the machine, you prob you probably would need uh, to do some preparation of them. For example, materials can be of, of liquid form, like this. And it can also be of, of powder form, like this. Or there can be uh, some, some more uh, complex device, like uh, something that is uh, printed on, on top of paper, for example. Some uh, nanomaterial or, or some uh, electronic component or something that you want to study. So these are, are all a few examples of the things that you can encounter. So the goal is to prepare these ones so they will fit inside the microscope or, or to get them to get the right shape and properties. For example, if you have paper-based substrates like this, the most common thing is that you cut them into the right shape and, and you embed them in plastic. It's quite common that you want to see the cross-section of the print and, and to do that, after the embedding, you polish it down. So that, here I have a few samples that's been embedded in plastic like that. So the, in this one, for example, there is a, a paper substrate with electronic components mounted on top of it. And uh, what you can see here in, in this plastic piece is that these uh, small squares are resistors that's been soldered onto the, onto the paper. What we wanted to do in this particular experiment is, is we want to see the interface of the electric connection. That means we embedded this in plastic and then we grinded it down and polished the surface. And then it can be analyzed in a scanning electron microscope. This one, for example, is the same kind of technique, but instead here the sample is, uh, is silicon. So we wanted to see the, the composition of contamination in the silicon. The third example here is uh, lots of different uh, grades of uh, filter paper that's been soaked with uh, nanomaterials. And we wanted to see the penetration of the nanomaterial through the filter. If you have, for example, a powder-based material like this, what you can do then is to, is to grind, grind it down. It can be very easy. And when you have done that, what you do then is you take a, a small glass slide from a microscope like this, you, you pour it out like that, and then you have a very excessive amount of powder onto this glass slide. You, have, you pull it back into the cup, and the thing that's left on here that you can't see, that's enough to make transmission electron microscopy. So what you do then is you take this glass slide, you pick up your box with grids, you take some tweezer you pick up one of these grids and then you just drag it across like this and then the sample is ready for analyzation in the transmission electron microscope this is the, the most easiest method if your sample is not powder based and instead of liquid type like this what you can do then is that you, you take a nice uh, lens paper like this. These lens papers are very good because they are dust free. Take up your grid like this, put it on top of this paper, take your material, keep your grid steady. You put on some drop, you can place this on the glass line. and put it on the heating plate to let it dry. Another technique that you can use is that you take your grid like this, put it on top of the, of the lens paper, you take your tweezer and make a hole in it. Another run of the suspension, and then you put this uh, suspension on top of the grid and with the lens paper beneath. In that way the, the grid will act like a filter, keeping all the interesting parts on top of the grid and the suspension will be sucked away out into the paper.
and then you're ready and let this dry in air first. Yeah, as you have seen now, I've been using lots of tweezers and, uh, and uh, it's always good to have a good box with tools with you when you do these experiments. Here is for example my box. And in this box you can find a tremendous amount of tweezers. You can never have enough of them. This tweezer for example is a reverse one, so then you don't need to, to hold, hold it firmly to, to, to grab something, it do that by itself. That's very handy. You can also make these ones by yourself by taking a regular tweezer like this and put on some rubber stuff on top here. And that way it's, it's fixated. Very handy. Uh, they're also nice to have different sizes and uh, different shapes of the tweezers. For example, this one is a straight and, and broad, broad tip tweezer. This is more for general use. And this is a bent and very sharp tip. This is very hand for tea and grease. You also need to have permanent marking pens. To, to write on all the samples and think what kind it is. That's very handy. Uh, a small sheet magnifier glass like this can be very, very, very uh, can be very useful. This also have is included with light. Costs sort of nothing. It's very, very neat to use. Uh, now here's another tweezer, this is uh, uh, protected from electrostatic charge. So if it's a dry humidity, then this one is your savior of the day. Scissor, some mirror can be useful sometimes, and the machine face for example. Uh, and I also have lots of uh, the tool pieces for the microscope. This is for SCM where you glue your samples on top. To do that you need to have some carbon tape. Here I have some carbon tape. And when you've done the whole, whole package it will look like this. So here you have a embedded plastic piece with paper substrate that's been attached to this piece that can fit inside the SCM then. Uh, sometimes you can uh, just uh, put your, if it's a liquid thing that you want to study in the SCM, you can just put your suspension directly on top of this. Very handy. And you can see that this is very glossy and mirror-like, and, uh, and that's because I polished it. You need to polish it if you going to want to use this method, otherwise the, the original one Let's see if I have one of those. Uh, here's our original, original. It's too uh, too rough in the surface to, to make it of any great use. Uh, I also have different kind of uh, polishing paste of different grades. Some glass knives when you do microtoming. This is a different kind of embedding. Here I am embedding the plastic into these small cylinders instead. And uh, this is used when you do ultra microtone when you cut slices of the paper. And then that you need to do when you do uh, electric, transmission electron microscopy on the samples because you need a very thin slice. I mean, uh, if you do scanning electron microscope, thickness is no problem. You only study the surface, so then you can go with this. The bottom layer I have different kind of sandpapers and some extra materials, some diamond knives, some pliers and things. So it's very neat to have a book like this. When you do work with your samples, it's very nice to have a very clean space. And one way to make a clean space is to to use just standard aluminum foil like this. This you can buy at a grocery store. If you put these on, on top of your bench, then you have a very nice surface to work on here. So here you can have your samples when you do your sample preparations and things like that. 
when you uh, sort of finish with your samples, you usually keep them in, in store in some box or something. And there are dedicated boxes for that. This is a typical box when you do scanning electron microscopy. Here you can put your, your ready pieces, like so, and you can keep them safe and carry them around with you when you go back and forth to the lab. If you do a transmission electron microscopy, especially if you do on, uh, on uh, this uh, microtone slices, you, there are special custom boxes for that as well. Here is one of those. The neat thing with this is that if you have if you have these uh, embedded plastic cylinders that you have cut, they will fit inside here. Like so. And then you can put your, your grids with your slices on top of here. So then you know that from this cylinder you have these four grids were cut and from this cylinder these four grids were cut. It can be lots of slices so it's nice to have some, some order in it. On the back side of the box you also have some note taking thing to write down what you actually have done. So these are a very neat box if you do microtoming. Otherwise if it's just standard TM grids with, uh, with suspension or something then you just use these default boxes. Bigger materials and things good to have on plastic box like this. Yeah, so that's it. Some general information on the tools that you need to do some basic sample minor preparation for microscopy. And I also discussed some of the techniques. These techniques I will show you in more detail in another video. So that's it.